Okay, hello and welcome back to Xehanon's. We're parked here in a rock hermit because we've been out crunching rocks. And I've actually managed to make a little bit of progress. And so far we've got, is that 1100 credits? We've also managed to beef up our mining transporter just a little bit. Well, more than just a little bit, a fair bit, actually. I'd like to talk about those before we get out and start cracking rocks again. So the first thing we got here on the list is the ore processor. The ore processor, in uh, combination with the ore scanner, allows me to scan and process minerals into s things that are more valuable. For example, I can take a mineral and maybe turn it into alloys or radioactive materials, gold, platinum, maybe even some gemstones. Very useful. The scanner targeting enhancement is an improvement on the tracking system, the targeting system. It allows me to target asteroids and other things in the sky to and track them. It's better than the old one because it actually gives an arrow in the HUD to, uh, that points to where everything is. So it's far easier to keep track of those little tiny uh, alloys and minerals. Very nice. The military injector upgrade is an improvement for our fuel injectors. They don't make the thing go any faster but they make it a little bit more efficient by recycling fuel. So it'd be nice if it go faster, but it cuts down on the gas prices, so that's good. The cargo spotter, this is a really nice one. It makes cargo, scoopable cargo, glow. It's really, really nice. It saves a lot of time. I'm glad I bought it. The docking computers allow the ship's computers to link up to a station and dock. It's not something I'd regularly use because I like docking manually, but I bought it in... I bought it with this external heat shielding to gain access to the planetary landing capability. The external heat shielding, well, it does what it sounds like it does. It protects the ship from heat. Uh, it's good for fuel scooping from suns, and it's also the prerequisite for the landing capability. The landing capability I bought because I thought I'd have uh, more markets to sell to with this. But unfortunately, planetary markets are connected with the markets of the main space station, so didn't really work out. I kind of regret buying it, but oh well. The Manifest MFD is a nice little addition to the HUD. It shows what's in my cargo bay without me actually having to flip to the market screen. It doesn't really make mining more effective, but it's really nice quality of life improvement. The ILS instrument landing system, I honestly don't remember buying this. I bought it by mistake some time ago, and well, it was cheap, so I, I don't really care. It makes landing even easier than it already is. I don't really like using it, but since it's on the ship, I don't have a choice. The broadcast comms allows me to send messages to various ships in the areas. This is kind of useful. I, mean, I had to use it to get out of a jam uh, a couple days ago, so it was alright. But it's not quite so useful for mining. Anyways, uh, let's get out there and get cracking. Alright, so right now I have actually sold more alloys to the main station than they will buy. So what I have to do 
is I have to go to other stations in the system. So today we're going to head to a super hub, which is the next closest station. It's not very close, to be perfectly honest, but it's the closest of the other stations in the system. So unfortunately, that's where we gotta go. But first we gotta fill up the hold. So we're gonna ditch these minerals. That are, let's switch over to the ore processor. Turn that on. Oh. I guess the minerals are just minerals. Alright. So we'll dump the minerals. Cargo jettisoned. And mine out some of these alloys. I think this one's the closest. Switch back over to the cargo spotter. Turn it on. It was already on. And let's get to mining. Hopefully this will fill up our hold. So because I ended up selling so many alloys to the main station, I was at the rock hermit trying out some of the mining contracts. Each rock hermit has a mining guild and they offer contracts for various amounts of minerals. The problem, of course, is that the mining build guild plays crap for their minerals. I mean, they don't even pay market for them. So unfortunately, oh bugger, I really I blew that up. Uh, but the mining guild doesn't pay uh, market. In fact, you'll be lucky if you can get half of market from the mining guild. So it's not really a place I want to work at. But it's convenient. And that's the good thing about it. It's just not very profitable. Oops. Yeah, so you can see the uh, ID tracker. It's working real nice there. A little green arrow on my HUD. Oops. So where are you? Where's that other one going? There it is. ID. Oh, 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 oh. Ooh, that was close. Let's go. Active. Okay, so the mining guild, they offer contracts. They're all timed. And usually, the contracts that have uh, the tightest uh, period of time pay the best. But even then, they pay peanuts compared to what the normal stations will buy. Let's go. Active. But because they're so, so close to the asteroid fields, it's really convenient to mine for them. I'm honestly not too thrilled with them, though. But I think maybe next week or the Active. week after, if I can find a good mining contract... I might do a video on that. That's if there's a good one. I know, because we can't pick. What's there is there. Let's go. Active. This asteroid has been... Oops. Less than good. But... Only five minerals. Seven. Let's go. Active. The two minerals I had before were left over from doing a mining contract, so it saves a little time. Let's go. Not Active. a whole lot. Oops. Yeah, only ten. In total, so we're gonna have to find another asteroid before we 
head over to the super hub. Let's go. Active. Ah. Oh. That big triangle there, that's not a Star Destroyer. That is a cruise ship. That's a really big cruise ship. If we could get closer to it, you could see the bridge on the other side of the triangle. But it's too far and takes too much time, so I don't really want to get that close to it. Alright, so I see an ice droid off in the distance there. It's more or less on the way, so we'll head over there. I mean, it's not quite on the way. So these extra stations in the system are all around the extra planets. The super hub number three is off to... is on the... orbiting the planet off to our right. Or no, that's the left. Haha. -ha. And that's actually the closest of the four other stations with a market in the system. There is a taxi station closer to the sun, but it doesn't have a commodities market, so you can't do anything there. ID activated. And the other two are further off. But saying that the Super Hub, that Super Hub 3 is close is not really all that meaningful since it's still really, really far away. So let's get this asteroid down. Hopefully. Shouldn't take too long. We only need two more alloys before our hold is full. What have you got for me, Boulder? Two alloys. Very nice. You can see that blue glow around the alloys. That is thanks to the cargo spotter I've got on. Because you know, I can turn it off and oh! Nothing there. Okay. So, let's head towards Super Hub 3. All the way in the distance. Here we go. Turn off the weapons since we don't need them. Okay. I think... I'm not positive, but I think that twinkling thing off in the distance that's right above my crosshairs is Super Hub 3. Yeah, it's pretty far. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to cut the video feed and when we get closer to Super Hub, three we will bring it back ring bring it right back so uh we'll see you in a little minute welcome back I hope that ride was as smooth for you as it was for me. In a little minute. Who says in a little minute? Anyways, we can see Super Hub coming up there. It's like a big elongated donut. Really easy to dock at. So there's no time to waste. Let's head over. One problem about coming to the super hub over here is that it's so close to this planet that we get gravity locked before we even get close to the station. So unfortunately we have to boost away for the most part. It's a nice planet though. It's a big cloud.
not bad. So yeah, there's a couple different types of stations that we can visit. This is the Super Hub, which is a station added by a mod expansion pack. It works the, exactly the same way as other stations, except that docking is really easy. There's a few others, but they're more or less the same as what is found in the base game. We've got a dodecahedron, isocahedron, and a Cori Olus, I think. Geometric shapes, really. Some of the modifications I've got at different stations in, like the Super Hub, the Taxi Station, which hopefully we'll, we'll go to see once I've got a better ship than this dinky little mining transport. And a really big one that I really want to see. I haven't seen one in game yet. It's called uh, the Taurus Station. And it looks like something out of 2001 A Space Odyssey. I really want to get to see one. But before I can do that, I have to buy a ship that'll let me get out of the system. Okay, so we're getting close. There's the beacon. When I lock onto the station to try and get docking clearance, you're going to see the ILS kick into action. It really, really makes docking easy. So let's lock on. It's basically autopilot for docking. I mean, I can move away, but the ILS will bring me right onto course again. So we've got ducking clearance, and let's fly into the donut. It's a chocolate donut. Let's fly into the chocolate. Yes, and welcome to Super Hub 3. I mean... Not that it's any different from any other station. So let's... Oh, no! We flew all that way, only to be able to sell one ton of alloys. Meh. Well, anyways. We'll call that a day. The last video went on too long, and I don't want this one to go on quite as long. So, we'll see you again in a week or two, maybe. And... Well, have fun. Thanks for watching. See you then.